Hey, Emily. Hey, Stephanie. You uh, want to do a podcast? Absolutely. Welcome to Cycle Chats, a podcast to destigmatize what it means to be a woman. This is episode 31, Live in Abundance. We have the pleasure of speaking with a woman who is looking to help you achieve abundance and peace in your life by setting boundaries and cultivating self-love through acceptance and healing. A certified abundant life coach, Sabrina Irene. Sabrina, thank you so much for joining us today. I love speaking to people who do what you do. So thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. We are so excited. This whole journey through the past year of interviews, I think has been a self-love journey for both Stephanie and I, for our listeners. And that's what this is all about. It's all about growth and finding the love that you have for yourself, no matter who you are. That's what this is. So my first question is always, what made you get into into this field? Yeah, so basically what made me enter into this field is I was in a rough season a couple of years ago and I had just gone through just a a breakup and I was just having all of the all of the emotions, the depression, and, you know, just everything that can come with those type of experiences. And I was just praying. I was like, God, I just need, I just, I don't know what I need. I just, I just want to feel better, you know? And I actually got online and there was a woman who had a Facebook group just for women. And her whole thing is about abundant life, about abundant living, about, you know, health, wealth, love, peace, and purpose, which is the, are the five components of abundant life. And I just entered into her Facebook group and I started connecting with these other women who were going through a lot of the the same thing that I was going through. It gave me a sense of just community, you know, just feeling like, you know, I'm not alone, you know, in what I'm experiencing. So from that, she also had a, a certification, a life coaching certification program. And let me back up a little bit. <laughs> back up the train. We're ready. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to skip over the important part. I entered into the Facebook and she offered a free one-on-one coaching session for everyone that was in her group. So I, I signed up for the session and I got on the phone with her and I spoke with her and she had a healing course that was five weeks and she charged like a thousand dollars for this course and she was telling me about it. I was I can't really do that right now I can't really make that investment and she decided to let me go through the course for free she was like the way that she worded it on the phone she was like you know I hear my spirit like God is saying to help her I don't want to cry but no listen This is part of it. And like the fact that this, whatever you believe in, I'm a big, like the universe pulls you and Emily and I have, we've been experiencing that as of late where people just believe in you and they get that feeling. And so that's a really beautiful thing that the universe gifted the two of you was that connection for her to say, I see something in this woman. And like, here you are right now being interviewed about what you do. So continue. I just think it's a fun full circle thing. So she, you know, she just said like, you know, I feel in my heart, I feel in my spirit that God is saying help her and she offered me this course that was five weeks and it was just life-changing and from that I went on to pay for her certification program to become a life coach and an abundant life coach and she trained me as well as other women to be coaches to use her same practices, her same healing steps that she put us through. So when I work with women, I'm not just throwing stuff out there. I'm actually doing what I did to get myself to the other side. So that's basically in a nutshell how how I entered into coaching. I didn't even know life coaching was a thing. Like I hadn't been in school for social work and, you know, everything like that. I knew I just wanted to do some type of counseling. I was um, going to school for therapy and I just, I didn't finish. And <laughs> I knew I wanted to be in the helping profession field, but I didn't even know coaching was a thing. But, you know, I guess God, the universe revealed it to me at the right time. I love that. You said something that made me smile over here. You were like, I'm not just throwing spaghetti at the walls. I'm using what I learned to therefore help my clients. And honestly, I think that's the best way that anybody can do anything. I'm a teacher. I'm an educator. Stephanie was an educator and I'm not teaching and pulling things out of my butt right? I'm, I'm teaching through the lessons that 
I've learned, and not only am I therefore teaching theater, I always tell my students, I'm going to teach you about life. I want you to understand and have the lessons that I learned, but with the twist of theater put into it because theater is life. So how do those two work together? So I love that you said that because that's the way that we should all be doing it. Don't just say, I never tried this, but maybe you just try. No, I, it worked for me. Maybe it will work for you too. And then if that thing doesn't work for you, I am here hundred percent to say, well, let's try something else then. Yes. I love that. And it's so interesting that you do theater. I, I, I took a theater class in high school. I didn't do too well, <laughs> but I love it. You know what? There's a place for everybody in theater. And I always say like, I used to perform on stage and I'm trying to get better about actually tooting my own horn instead of being like, no, I wasn't. I think I was pretty darn good at it, but I just found my place backstage and I really loved it. So I think there's a place for everybody, whether that be on stage, backstage, or in the audience, or comfortably at home saying, I wish I could be there. Everyone has a place. And I think that just kind of, that goes to anything you do in life. I think being a coach is, we've talked to a couple of them and it's, I always find the best coaches are the ones that have gone through the experience. And not only are you going through that, but now you're teaching others, which re-solidifies that cycle of, oh, that's right. I'm teaching this thing I learned and I'm actually, I'm reminding myself. And so you're like ingraining it in you as you're helping somebody else go through it. So my question for you, Sabrina, is why is self-love so hard for us to achieve? I can only speak for me. I know for me, self-love, it's really an everyday decision to love yourself. A moment, not even every day, a moment by moment decision. And for me, it was hard because I didn't learn. I didn't know, like growing up, being raised, you know, by my parents and everything, it was just something that wasn't taught to me. So I didn't know that it was something I had to grow in, that it was something I had to do until I got older. And I was like, like, oh, I might need to start loving myself because the world will just eat you up if you don't. You don't have boundaries. Like that, that was my main thing, you know, just, just wanting love, but not knowing that it came from me first, that it came from within me first. So, you know, I was just making bad relationship choices, just believing everything that I heard. Um, somebody said they love me. I'm like, oh, I love, I love you too. Yeah. 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 Like, but it's not that simple. To answer your question, did I answer your no, question? No, you, you did. You lost. did. No. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. We get lost in conversation, but we are breaking through the cycle. This is what it's all about. So feel free to get as lost as you want. I certainly do. You did answer the question and you brought up something about your upbringing. And I know a lot of times I'm in therapy right now and we are diving into trauma and childhood work and all that stuff. And it's bringing up some feelings and I'm like, wow, I didn't realize how something that happened when I was younger or in my adolescence affects me still to this day as a 30 year old woman. So from your coaching and what you have gone through, how do you find that people, I guess the question is how does trauma affect our self-love? So like in what ways does that present itself? Right. So I, I believe that trauma affects our self-love in that it takes a toll on our self-esteem. You know, we, we all have different traumas. What might be traumatic for one person might not be as traumatic for somebody else. So we all handle trauma in different ways and for me the trauma that I experienced you know childhood it really affected my self-esteem it affected the way that I viewed myself just because of the abuse that I experienced I internalized it and I took it on as like it's my fault in a way so when you think that when you grow up to think that way you know about yourself it's like okay there must be something wrong with me you know, because I was treated this way, it must be something that I did. And when you're a child and you don't have the tools and maybe the influences to change that narrative that's in your head, it's like you're left with that to deal with that on your own. And it comes with you into adulthood. And then now you're trying to be an adult and do adult things. And you're like, well, there's this meme. It has like this big bag and it says childhood and it's like the person is holding up the childhood bag and then it has adulthood like it's like on his shoulders and it's like that's a perfect picture of 
what we're doing sometimes we're holding so much baggage from our childhood now we're trying to be adults with the the world on our shoulders sometimes it feels like we have to just deal with that we have to release that and heal so that we can be free so that we can live an abundant life I love that and like Steph said before we've spoken to coaches before and they're always one of my favorite conversations because as Steph said it's usually people that have come from whatever trauma they've dealt with and then decided to help other people with that trauma. And I, I love that because I think that's passion, that's love, that's communication. And that childhood thing is so rough. Steph and I were just talking about it the other day. The things that we deal with as kids, it, it's baggage. And then we don't even realize it. And we like, it keeps in our brain somewhere. It's just like a little thing that keeps going. And then all of a sudden you're in relationships. Like I know this happened for me all the time. I was always in emotionally abusive relationships. And I was like, wait a minute, why am I allowing this to continue again and again and again? Where is that stem? from. And then I realized, oh man, it was my childhood stuff, things with my mom who wasn't always emotionally available to me. So I thought that was the right way to do relationships, emotionally abuse somebody. I was like, all right, come at me, tell me I'm terrible. But once you start dealing with that childhood trauma, which is where, you know, it's coming from and stemming from for some people, I think that's where the beauty therefore of the growth comes from because you're able to therefore acknowledge I've had this trauma. I know where it comes from and now I want to grow out of it. So that leads me to my question of how can we, and how do you coach, which is something that Stephanie always asks, like what's the first thing you do with a client to help them attain this abundant life? So the, the very first thing is first getting clear on where they are because if you don't know where you are, you don't know what you're starting from. So getting clear on where they are, what the current symptoms are, the current circumstances are, and then mapping out, okay, all right, you know where you are, where do you want to be? If you're in depression right now and you want to come out of depression, what does that look like for you? You know, how do you want to feel? So we have a clear goal. And then we start unpacking the trauma. We start going through uncovering the beliefs. Like, what are you believing that is not true? What are you believing about yourself, about your experiences? For me, it wasn't easy to see where the thought processes that I had that was keeping me in this position. So I needed to speak with someone so that person can just show me me. Sometimes we just need to be shown ourselves like shown how what's, what's really in your heart what, what are you really thinking what mindset do you have that's not serving you are you willing to let that mindset go are you open to a new way of thinking so that's where I start I love that and I think that's great because what you're doing is you're challenging them to shift their perspective because I think as women we always want to lift each other well we all just speak for ourselves when we say things but we want to generally lift people up and I think one of the hardest things as women is to say, I actually don't think that that's healthy. You think that way. And there's a way that you can present it so that you're not being accusatory or like really harsh, but it's presenting it. And it's like a tough love thing. You're saying, you know, I hear what you're saying and you might not believe me, but that's wrong. And getting them to dig down and like say it out loud is really helpful. And that has been like the number one for me in therapy is when my therapist will start to probe and then she'll start to ask me questions. And I can see your, your therapy background kind of peeking out in some of the things you say. And that's really helpful as a coach because that's what it is, is you're trying to get them to say these words that they've internalized. And so when you're hearing yourself say it, you're like, oh my God, I've only thought some of this stuff, but hearing it out loud, whether it be positive and they've never heard themselves say that about themselves before, or negative and they're like, oh my God, I would never say that to another person. Why on earth would I be saying that to myself? I think that's huge because it, it allows them now to process and say, okay, where can I go to be different from this point? What you were saying too, 
is the visualization, right? We view ourselves in a certain light, but therefore it gets reflected on us the way we view ourselves by the way other people treat us. So to have relationships, real relationships, communicative two-way street relationships, which is something that I know I can speak for Stephanie on because that's what we have. It's pointing out, hey, can we fix this? It's working together to serve the better. And that's, I think, what I find a lot of women don't have in reality. They think they have all these really amazing friends that are like, we can go out and have a drink or, you know, watch a movie or talk about boys. But like true relationships and communication come in when it's not always so easy to talk about when you can go through those bumpy roads and get to the other side and actually have a better relationship after. So imagine having that relationship though with yourself, right? It's not always going to be easy and you're not always going to agree with yourself, but it's communicating, I think, and talking to yourself and saying, well, how can I let that go so that I can, like Steph was saying, grow and be better, be different, be the person I want to be instead of this person that people are perceiving me as, because it's not always true. Right. We lie to ourselves all the time in the mirror. We're like, yeah, but what is that mirror actually reflecting? Is it you or is it somebody, somebody is perceiving you as? Yeah, I love that. That's so true. Have you ever had a difficult time breaking down the wall? Like you can totally see where this person is and where they could be, but they just like cannot let go of that trauma. Yes. And and not only with coaching, in my just my working profession as well. I think I, I'm gifted to just I see the potential in everyone. <laughs> you know, I, I see the goodness in, in everyone. And, and sometimes it's, it's like I have to, you know, know when to kind of detach as well, because it's like, okay, they have this, I want them to see it, you know, for themselves. But sometimes, you know, some people just aren't, aren't ready yet. So that's the difference between like, I guess what I do as far as social work and coaching, but I have to, you know, constantly remind myself that I'm just a guide. I'm not God. So I can point out and like, encourage and say, like, I think you're a wonderful, amazing person. You have so much potential. And I see that you're better than this, than, you know, where you are right now. And you, you have a future and, and speak life and all of that. And some people are able to receive it. Some people aren't in that moment, but that doesn't mean that they won't later on. So I think I just went off on a tangent again and I kind of forgot what you just said. No, 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 that you are totally answering my question. And I love the fact that you mentioned that you have to take a step back sometimes, because I think a lot of times when you're dealing with coaches or guides, people who are unhealed, this is most of the time what I find when you're unhealed and you're trying to heal someone else, you like pour that into them. But it seems like you are the type of coach who has done the healing. You're continuing to heal. So you know where your boundaries are and you know when to place them to say, look, I'm giving you my love and my light. However, this boundary needs to be set because you're not receiving and I can't fix you. I can give you all of the tools and just like in therapy, it's not going to work unless you do. Someone is not going to fix your problems, but they can guide you. It's like, have you ever had a client that just isn't ready in that moment? And you can see that and you're like, why don't we revisit? visit this at another time. Definitely. I don't count those out who aren't ready because I wasn't ready at one time. The coach that I worked with, she didn't force anything on me because, okay, just being transparent, as a teenager, I experienced sexual abuse and I was around 13 years old. And when I spoke with her, she was the first person that I told. I was in my 20s. I held in a secret for over 13 years and I wasn't ready to really look at that yet but she gave me that space and she was like okay you know you might not be ready right now but it is something that you're going to have to to tell basically I didn't tell my mom about it at that moment I was like no I'm not even trying to hear it it was so repressed it was just so buried and that was the main one of the main reasons why I was making a lot of the decisions that I was making that was just adding to my pain and she gave me that grace she gave me that space to say okay maybe you're not ready right now 
maybe you won't be ready next year, but I want you to start praying about it. And then when, once it was revealed and was uncovered, it was something that I couldn't ignore anymore. Like once something comes to the light, it's something that, <laughs> it's something that, okay, it's here, it's in your face, you got to deal with it. It's not your fault. All of those thoughts, because when something is covered, when it's a secret, it can eat away at you. For me, I was making these decisions, like just trying to self-medicate and trying to just, I don't know, searching for something. So just back to your point, I definitely believe in just, if someone isn't ready right now, that don't mean they won't be ready. Because when I faced it, when I, I told my mom about it, that took boldness. It took courage. It was something that I, I didn't think I was ever, like my, my, in my mind, I was like, okay, this is just gonna, I'm just keep this in the grave. Like this is gonna be with me, <laughs> you know, until I die. And no one has to know because it was just so much shame and just guilt behind it. But that was eating away at me on the inside. And it was really blocking me from self-love. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I know that's incredibly personal and it takes a lot of vulnerability to share that and you are never alone. That just goes to show that your path that led you to this point, all of that stuff was not in vain and that you are taking those things and you are giving that gift to other women to say, you don't have to feel shame or guilt about things that you did not have control of. Now, let me show you where you can take that control and finally love yourself and that your inner child. I mean, that's a really big one is like, where was the love that we didn't get when we were kids, those missing pieces. It's like, you're giving that to yourself as an adult and you're yeah. starting to realize, wait, I'm treating my younger self in a way that never served me. So what did I need when I was younger? And once you start flipping that thought pattern, you start to see like, oh, wow, this is what it means to honor my inner child, you know? And it's, you know, trying not to get like rah, rah, hoorah about it, but it's true. When, when you've gone through something and you have forced yourself to grow up I was always told you're very mature for your age and I still get that but the truth is that was a defense mechanism because of like the emotional trauma that I experienced is I learned how to separate these like people in my head and it was like this is the big strong girl woman that's gonna like bold and proud and will take care of me and then this is the really meek small and it affected me into my older years and then when I finally started to bring it to the light I couldn't go back. And so the fact that you brought it to the light and then you said, you know what? I see how bright and how beautiful all the colors are. Why would I go back into that cave where everything was dark and dull and I couldn't see how beautiful life was? So right. kudos to you for pushing through that and coming out on the other side. And I know growth is never ending. And I am so like excited to see where you go from here. Like, I, girl, I was stalking your Instagram page and I was like, <laughs> this woman, she's got some nuggets of truth. It's been beautiful to see. It's nice to know there are people out there that are being vulnerable and sharing their story because you are helping other people who are afraid to share theirs and you're giving them safe space. Thank it's awesome. You. It's not easy. It's really not. Self-love is being open, being vulnerable, and I'm still learning it. You know, I'm still learning it every day and just making a decision that, that I can honor my inner child by speaking up for her. And all right, I'm getting emotional again, but we love crying on this show. So go for it. We talk about a good show. I bawled my eyes out the other night. I told Emily, side note, we can keep it in or not. My therapist wants to really dig down deep. She wants to like have a tough session. And so if I come over crying afterwards, that's, that's why. Sure enough, she got in there. It was like an hour long session. I called Emily. I was like, hey, I'm done. She's like, yeah, how was it? And I was like, I don't know. I was like laughing and crying and I didn't know where to place my emotions. I was like, I'll see you soon. And I just sat there and I was like, because <laughs> it, it's sometimes you just kind of get it out. You got to let it out. We just it's had a friend tell us that she hasn't cried in years. And I was like, what? I don't understand. I cry, I don't know, once a week at least. I set appointments. If it's been a while, I'm like, okay, let me see Moulin Rouge. And it's like that, that movie gets me every time. I just, I don't understand. I have to let it out. And if that's the way that you want to let it out by crying, by dancing, by singing, whatever it may be for you, but to like not allow the emotion to actually surface. And like you were saying, to just keep it under the blanket. Well, that blanket's going to keep filling up and that mountain 
it's only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then you're going to be totally overwhelmed. And you're going to be like, well, I'm never going to be able to climb that mountain. I'm never going to be able to clean that blanket now. So, you know, every day, like you kept saying, and I love it. I wrote it down already. You keep saying it's a decision. And I love that language because it is a decision. Decide that it's your time now, because I think that's so important. And about this self-help stigma that we have in this country, I don't know if it's like a worldwide thing, but we certainly have it in the United States where self-help is shamed. You are shamed for asking for help. I don't understand why that's the stigma when asking for help and actually deciding it's time to make a change is so difficult. Be proud and be like, you know what? I'm not done growing because the journey is never over. As we all know, I need to better myself in this way. Go get that book. Go listen to that podcast. Go talk to somebody like don't shame yourself. Don't shame other people that it doesn't make any sense to me. It needs to be changed. The language, the narrative needs to be changed to congratulations. You've done it. I think self-medicating, right? Sabrina, that's what you were mentioning. I've gone through that. So I I feel you on that girl. That's tough. And that's a rough road. Even now I'm like, I got to learn to say no to certain things when I'm out with people. And I was like, I can do this sober. I don't have to be to have a good time. And so what helped you be able to overcome the self-medication? So for me, again, a decision, you know, everything is a decision. So for me, it was like, I felt like if I were to keep self-medicating, I wouldn't be able to get the true healing, the true breakthrough that I wanted. I don't like taking pills or medicine or anything like that. I've always been a type of person where, I ain't gonna say always been a type of person, but I don't want to have to depend on anything to be happy. I don't want to have to depend on anything to be free. So I remember I had this conversation while I was high. I used to smoke marijuana. So I had this conversation with God, but I was like, God, I really don't want to have to need this to feel good. I really just had to get honest. From that conversation, I went back to it, but I knew that it wasn't something that I was going to continue. It wasn't something I could honestly within myself feel comfortable with continuing because I knew that I didn't really need it. And I knew that it was just about me just making a decision that I don't have to be dependent on anything outside of me to feel the way I wanted to feel. So back to your question with clients who might not be ready, I don't pressure anyone because I feel like you have to come to that conclusion yourself. Now, if it's something that you want to do when you're struggling with it, okay, we can, you know, work through that. Maybe you just cut back and you wing yourself off. Some people can go cold turkey, some people can't. So it's just about that individual person. And, you know, if they're ready, I would never force anyone to let go of anything they're not ready to because if you're not ready to then you're going to go back to it so for me I I just really had to make the decision I didn't want to have to depend on anything outside of me that's not even just with substances that's with that's with anything (laughs) you know I don't want to have to be so dependent where if I don't have a person if I don't have something if I don't have it then I'm just all flustered that's not the will of God we have everything that we need within us and if something else a us something else that's healthy will aid us and yeah that's fine but if I don't have it then I'll still be okay I love that and I think what's really good because I always like to share when someone shares you know their personal journey I always try to mirror with mine because it, it just goes to show you how all of this connects and like how similar all of our experiences are I'm on a low like a very low dose antidepressant right now I had a hospitalization episode a couple months back and I didn't know what was going on I got diagnosed to generalize anxiety disorder. I've had OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder my whole life. And I remember I was so resistant to getting on meds and I got on them and I was like, great, I'm cured, right? And th- this is what we all think. And then I had another episode and I was like, oh my God, what is going on? My anxiety has never felt like this before. Once I started to realize, started to reach out to different resources and find that support with people who could coach, who could guide from their own personal experience, I started to realize that I wasn't doing any of the work and that I was relying again on something to make me feel better and to get rid of the bad feelings. And so I told myself, I'm going to stay on this, but I'm going to stay on a really low dose because doctors always are like, oh, you're feeling anxious. 
bump up your dose. And I just didn't like the way I felt. I said, I would rather feel the anxiety and work through it and allow myself to float through this panic and anxiety than to have to rely on continuing to bump up my medicine to be stable. Now, for other people, I know plenty of human beings who have to take it. It's not their favorite thing in the world. They do everything they can, but they just have to take it. And I respect that decision. But for people who are looking to escape their problems and escape what they're feeling, and I feel I fall into that category. You have to become self-aware enough to know that you are using something to mask what's really going on. And if you don't face this, it's going to eat you alive. That's not to say that you have to slay the dragon in one go. You have to maybe practice first. So it's really good to hear somebody else kind of mirror that. And that was something I always struggled with was like, I want to be able to feel this stuff and not numb myself out. And I think that is where a lot of people go is that they use it to numb them themselves. And once you realize I don't have to do this and I can get myself to a place of peace, things start to change, but it's not easy. It's really hard. I do not like the way I feel when I'm anxious or on the verge of a panic attack, but I let it happen. And I say, come and get me because the truth is you do have all of the tools. Your body is a beautiful machine. Your brain is a beautiful creation and it it knows what to do your breathing knows what to do and I, I think when you allow yourself and you give yourself that space and that grace to say I got this and then you float through it you don't have to like it but you float through it you start to see how capable you are of doing things you never thought were possible it's like accept the things we cannot change and help us change the things we can and I think that's a key to everything that you encompass in your coaching yeah well said Steph claps claps all around you know I'm not gonna clap because yeah therapy, therapy but I'm not gonna <laughs> clap because I hate editing claps out or leaving them in it's the no it is the worst after so to bring this whole interview around in a lovely circle we're talking about self-love we're talking about making the decision and stepping out of it to grow into the next space that you're ready for so my question is how do you know you're ready and what is the first step to take on the journey. So how do you know you're ready? You know you're ready when you are just tired of doing the same thing over and over. And you're just, you've come to the end of yourself. That's when you know you're ready. Now, the first step is to get some help because you're going to need someone, you know, whether it's a therapist, whether it's a, a trusted friend, you know, whether it is a coach, you're going to need someone to be your guide along the journey, get you some accountability. It might be a group that you join, you know, get you some accountability accountability of people that are that wants to go in the same direction that wants to evolve that wants to grow and develop and start there to start there and trust and trust that God and the universe will put the right people in your path, will give you the right tools, give you everything that you need. You know, have an abundant mindset, which is, you know, there is no lack. That everything that I need, I'll have when it's time for me to have it. And, you know, flow. We love flow. We didn't even know it existed until, you know, doing these interviews and talking to Sarah so long ago. But it's changed our lives. Like I said, this, this whole process of this podcast and our journey along with it and our journey together along with it. It's growth. It is empowerment. It is education. I mean, we are completely different people. And this whole time as we're talking, I'm just having all of these thoughts and I'm like, I cannot wait to listen back and edit this episode because I think it's going to be so different than the episodes that I've edited in the past, because even Stephanie and I are speaking a different way because we're in a different place. And I think that's the beauty of this. We're always growing. We're always flowing. You just have to be ready for it. Step up and say, you know what? I am ready to step in to abundance and to myself because I deserve that. And that's, that's beauty. That's, that's everything. So what does women empowerment mean to you? To me, it, it, it basically means tapping into your inner power, you know, your inner, you know, womanhood. And it, like I said before, it just not needing anything outside of you. So just being empowered as a woman and empowered women empower other women. And as you pour out, you'll get filled up. That's what women's empowerment means. You know, not being a victim of 
circumstances, taking all the limits of life and making lemonade and just taking pain and turning it into purpose and power. So my last question for you, Miss Sabrina, is what advice would you give your 15 year old self? Because we so often forget to look back and say, what did I need to hear? So I would tell my 15 year old self, she is love. I would tell her that it's not your fault. I would tell her that her future is amazing and that she'll get there. I love that. Steph and I just, we took the dog for a walk yesterday because we had a business meeting and we asked her, you know, she asked me first, because we always say that we're always podcasting and we should just always have a recording session. But she was like, what would your 15 year old self think of you now? So we talked and I told her, and then I asked her the same thing. And both of us came to the same conclusion. It would be pride. You are the guide and the light and the woman that 15 year old you was so desperately trying to find. And I think that's freaking awesome. I will cry when we get off this call. (laughs) I'm trying to keep it together to get to the end of this interview. That is a beautiful thing. And it shows. And it's like, that's all we ever want is what did we miss when we were younger? What did we not have? And then as we get older, we can either choose to continue to seek that out in others, or we can stop and say, wait, I actually can give that to myself. It's me for me. I love it. Uh, (laughs) I love it so much. All right, Steph, you know what to do. I'm going to take it away because this has been an absolute pleasure and just the best way to kick off coming back from our break, truly. So where can people find you? And do you have anything coming up that we should know about? Okay, so I can be found on IG. That's where I'm at mostly. And I definitely have a goal to boost up my engagement this year. I also have a YouTube channel. It's Sabrina Irene. Uh, I don't have a lot of videos yet, but I'm, I'm going to have some. Just bear with me. And that's pretty much it. I'm, I'm on TikTok, but I'm not. I'm not as active I, I don't TikTok, understand it. That, so. that, that's Stephanie's thing. I don't get the children these days. But mainly IG. So follow me on IG at I am Sabrina Irene. And, and yeah, also coming up, I'm going to be doing a 21 day self-love challenge. It's going to be a free challenge. And it's going to be if you follow me on IG, you can click the link in my bio and download the worksheets. It's going to be an assignment every day, a self-love assignment every day. And I'm going to come live on IG just to check in and just see if you did your assignment and how your assignment made you feel and things like that. And I'm going to be, it's a challenge for me as well. So I'm going to be doing the the steps also. I love that. And I love that you're doing it too, because right. I always tell my kids when I'm teaching and as we've talked about your growth is never over. So to like remind yourself and do these things yourself, even though I've taught from the same textbook for the past five months, I'm still going to read the same textbook to make sure that I have my notes correctly, because maybe my point of view has changed on that certain subject or because I've changed my point of view has changed. And and that's, that's awesome. That's what it is. Forever a student, forever a student. We are forever <laughs> students. I love it. I will never be done with school because I just want to learn everything that I possibly can. Oh man, this was, yeah, like Steph said, this was the most beautiful way to start off this new round of interviews with all of you fantastic ladies that I just thank you so much. We always say it, time is precious. And the fact that you gave up some of your time to spend educating, empowering, and inspiring us just means the world. So thank you. Thank you. A thousand times. Thank you. Thank you both. I have definitely enjoyed this whole conversation has been so life-giving, like, and I just so inspired and thankful um, for what you all are doing, you know, just for giving, you know, women a platform, uh, a space to share and to make it so comfortable. And I just love both of your your energy and everything. It has been amazing. So I just want to say thank you for that. Thank you, really. Thank you a thousand times, like I said. And thank you to everybody who is listening right now. I hope that you enjoyed the episode as much as we enjoyed being able to talk and grow through this beautiful hour that we've had together. Remember, if you're not following us on Instagram, go ahead and follow us at Cycle Chats. It's all lowercase. And also we have a beautiful website that Stephanie worked six hours on. I was cracking that whip and she did it. So it's www.cyclechats.com. You can find out more about us. You can find some fun projects that may be coming up. We have a blog post every other week, usually talking about the episode and what we learned. So 
make sure to check that out and slide into our DMs, guys. This is all about cultivating a community for women, a space where we can start the conversation. It's time to stop the competition and start the collaboration because we've all gone through whatever traumas we have been through to get us here. And it's time that we start talking. So slide into those DMs. I promise Stephanie and I will answer and we are there for you. If we can't help you, then we'll point you in the right direction like somebody like Sabrina. So we love you. Thank you. And as always, we hope you sync up with us next time.